Basic Psychology Cultural Bias in Psychology Ethnocentrism Ethnocentrism is the assumption that one's own cultural group is superior to others. I see, so it's about using our own cultural norms as a basis to judge other groups? Exactly. It doesn't necessarily mean we see other groups in a negative light, but we tend to view our own behaviors and beliefs as normal or more superior. That's really interesting. Can you give me an example of how this can lead to biases? Sure, one example is the Western value of individualism over collectivism. In Western society, dependence is often seen as undesirable, whereas in collectivist cultures, it's more valued. I hadn't thought about it that way. So this alpha bias can lead us to devalue other cultural practices? Yes, that's right. Ethnocentrism can also lead to a beta bias, where researchers believe their worldview is the only valid one. For example, using American IQ tests globally, assuming they're universally applicable. Wow, I can see how that could be problematic. It's important to be aware of our own biases and try to understand other cultures objectively. Absolutely. Recognizing and addressing ethnocentrism is crucial for promoting cross-cultural understanding and respect. Cultural Relativism Did you know that the opposite of ethnocentrism in psychology is cultural relativism? No, I didn't. What is cultural relativism? Cultural relativism is the idea that all cultures are worthy of respect, and we should try to understand the way in which other cultures see the world. That makes sense. But can cultural relativism also lead to biases? Yes, it can. There are two types of biases, alpha bias and beta bias. What are those? Alpha bias is when assumptions of real differences can lead investigators to overlook universal similarities between cultures. For example, a study by Mead, 1935, in Papua New Guinea initially concluded that there were significant differences in gender due to culture, but later recognized significant universals, such as all men being more aggressive across the cultures than women. I see. And what about beta bias? Beta bias is when cultural relativism is applied to diagnosing mental disorders. Behaviors that are statistically infrequent in one culture may be more common in another. For instance, schizophrenia has one of the diagnosis criteria as hearing voices, which may be a common experience in other cultures. If the same diagnostic rules are applied universally, we may incorrectly classify people as mentally ill based on a criteria that is only relevant in Western cultures. Wow, that's really interesting. It's important to consider cultural differences when it comes to mental health diagnosis. Exactly. Cultural relativism is a crucial concept in psychology that helps us understand and respect the diversity of human experiences and behaviors. Evaluating cultural bias Did you know that one of the ways to counter ethnocentrism in psychology is by encouraging indigenous psychologies and developing different theories in different countries? No, I didn't know that. Can you tell me more? Absolutely. One such example is Afrocentrism, a movement that proposes that all black people have their roots in Africa, and that psychological theory should be rooted in African-centered values. That's fascinating. So Afrocentrism challenges the view that European values are universally applicable? Exactly. Afrocentrism suggests that European values can devalue non-European people, or be irrelevant to their life and culture. I see. So how can we tackle cultural bias in psychology research? One way is by using samples from different cultural groups. A study found that in one European textbook, 66% of the studies were American, 32% were European, and only 2% came from the rest of the world. Wow, that's a really skewed representation. What else did the study find? Another study found that 82% of psychology studies used American undergraduate students as participants, making them 4,000 times more likely to be included than a random non-Westerner. That's a huge disparity. 
it sounds like a lot of psychology is based on a very narrow demographic. Exactly. This can lead to psychological findings that are not representative on a global scale or even within Western culture. I can see how that could have serious consequences. Can you give an example? Sure. The U.S. Army IQ test used before World War I showed European immigrants below white Americans and African Americans at the bottom, leading to enduring stereotypes about certain ethnic groups and their intelligence, 